Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. Welcome, in fact, to PCP Movie Night. And tonight we got a very special treat because we are in Crew's Choice. That means the panelists, those who are here every week, or for the most part, almost every week, get to choose a movie to discuss. And tonight is Brooks's pick. And Brooks has picked the Sergio, Sergio Leone film, Once Upon a Time in the West. Very excited to talk about this milestone in Western cinema. And since it was his pick, we're bringing him in first. It's Brooks. What is up? So you bring me a horse. <laughs> <laughs> you brought two too many. Oh, dude. Some of the best lines are from harmonica in this film, yeah. right, man? Yeah, this is a great movie. A lot of great one liners in this movie. Inside the dusters were three men. Inside, Inside the, the men, men were three bullets. Three bullets. <laughs> Right. Speaking of three bullets, you can't do a once upon a time in the West stream without three bullets. And bullet one is me. Bullet two is you. And bullet three is always with a bang. Jelani, what is up, my man? Pew, pew, kids. Pew, pew. Man, it's good. Man, Brooks, you be picking up bangers, man. Yeah, it's like hot, a, it's hot, like a hot bangers, bet. Man. I was like, it's probably a safe Yeah. Picture. Everybody will like. Yeah. All right. So let yeah, me let I me get into this. this one. Once upon a time in the West. We, we talk about and joke about how it's like Dario Argento's first film. And what I mean by that is that he was a film critic and he was a uh, fan of Sergio Leone. And Sergio Leone really liked him because he liked his movies, right? And we know that kind of critic creator kind of dynamic here at PCP. I'm like, not going to lie about that. But they started talking about an idea for a story. And Dario Argento, who at this time, like I said, was just a film critic started talking with Sergio. They came up with some ideas. They brought in another writer. They came up with this long ass treatment that then got turned into a script, which got turned into this movie. Now, once upon a time in the West, I hadn't seen this movie Brooks in like 20 years since like we saw it back in the day, probably or something like that. Right. Yeah, I probably watched about 10 years ago, I think. Okay. Okay. So like there's that going on. And, and what's crazy to me is for some reason in my head, I always place this movie as one of Sergio Leone's first spaghetti Westerns, but it's not, it's, it's after the, the dollars trilogy, for instance. Right. But it is such a meticulously crafted movie that I don't think is quite perfect on the rewatch. I had to start this movie three times. Right. Like I started it the first night. I made it 30 minutes through. I fell asleep. Just just the time of the night that I'm watching it. Second time, I make it an hour and 30 into it. I fall asleep. Third time, I start again from the beginning. I make it all the way through. It is a really Bravo. Is a yeah, thank you. It's a really good film that I that I adore. And I think it is a very artsy, it's like an art house western film, is what it is that references other Westerns, including Leone's own work. You know what I'm saying? I like this film a lot. I love it. Is it perfect? No. The reason why it's not perfect is because in its full restored form, that's the one that, that I watched, right? Like two hours, 50 minutes. It does run a little bit long, okay? It, it, it runs long, it drags, and sometimes it sacrifices the audience's enjoyment for the sake of art. And I applaud that. And at the same time, I go, bruh, this could have really been trimmed down and simplified in certain ways. However, I can't think of not only a Western, there are very few movies to me that encapsulate a perfection of the audio and the visual together. The music, it's Morricone's best. It's Morricone's best. And it's the simplest score he's ever done outside of The Thing, which he collaborated with for uh, John Carpenter, right? But it is so expertly put together visually with the music. You, you take the music out, it doesn't work. You take the visuals out, that music doesn't work with another film. It is so handcrafted, just, but just 
there's so much attention to detail. The music was was come up with before the movie, like a lot of Italian cinema, right? And maybe this is something that Dario Argento learned from this movie, right? But they filmed, the, I mean, they recorded the music first. Then when they oh, were wow. when they were that. filming it, they would play the music on set. And there are bits, like when Frank is like treadling, treading along on his horse, galloping along, and he's timed with the music, bro. The, the, the damn horse gallop is timed with the music. There are things about this movie that I think are perfection. It's not quite there yet. Maybe a bit too ambitious. Maybe a bit too... I don't know. Maybe a bit too... Nobody said no. I don't know. I love this movie, though. Brooks, it's your pick. Why? What do you think about this film overall? Uh, it's all right. I'm kidding, of course. I, I love I love this movie, and uh, oddly enough, it was you that introduced me to this movie. Like uh, like early 2000s, I was going through a, a west a bit of a western phase. I was like watching the uh, the Eastwood trilogy, you know, and like uh, Hang 'Em High, Pale Rider. I was getting into, into a western phase, and you brought up this movie. I was like, no, I haven't seen that one. I never even heard of it. And uh, I watched it. And I remember liking it a whole lot. Um, and I remember, I mean, it's a movie that I remember liking, enjoying a lot. But this time, I really enjoyed it even more, I think, because, like, it's a different experience just watching a movie and watching a movie and analyzing it, you know, and, like, trying to, like, think about, you know, like, look deeper into it. And, like, this movie, I love this movie, dude. Like, the characters are what makes this movie. And... I think they're. I think I love the like. I know the the whole scenes being dragged out. Like you know, a lot of the. I love. I love that shit, dude. I, it's like, this movie to me is like the Citizen Kane of westerns. It is like like if if I'd met somebody who like had never seen a western in their entire lives and were like, what western should I start with? I'd be I'd be I'd point to this one. I'd be like that's all. That'll tell you pretty much everything you need to know about westerns. Like the yeah, steely, steely glances. Man. The quippy one-liners. The in the, in the uh, I got the Blu-ray right, Brooks. I bought it yeah. finally, right? I, I got the Blu-ray. Thank you, Scarpad, for that. But I uh, I watched some of the special features. John Carpenter's on there, and he's like, I watched the commentary track. Oh, nice! Yeah. I watched like half of it, but I couldn't make it through all of it because it's a pretty yeah. fucking long film. And thank you for yeah, not it, picking it something bit, so lengthy, long. Lengthy. Thank you for picking something not so long as the next movie back to back. Yeah, we're doing a Kurosawa film next week. So anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, two long ass movies, but definitely worth it. Um, what I was going to say is that John Carpenter mentions when he watched this movie, he was like, what the fuck am I looking at? Like, what is this? Nothing is like this. Like, we've seen Good and the Bad and the Ugly. It's got artistic flair, but it's also very commercial, right? All those Leone films, even D- uh, Duck You Sucker or whatever it's called, right? Or F- that's Fistful of Dynamite, but then Fistful of Dollars. Those movies, like, like, like <laughs> First of all, the spaghetti western is way different than the American western, right? And like people were saying when they watched this movie, they didn't know what the fuck was going. Like it's it's artsy as fuck, dude. It's art house, man. Like you were talking about those elongated shots, the like what I was talking about, the way the music works with the film visually, so meticulously crafted, right? Yeah, like there's one scene in this movie that that I like, I really don't like. It's not so much because it's a bad scene; it's just that like. You know, it's the the McBain scene, like, you know, before leading up to the massacre. Like, it's so boring. Like, I don't care about McBain. Like, I want to get to Cheyenne. But, uh, yeah, other than that, but it's still, it's, I still think, you know, it's obviously not a scene you can cut out, I don't think, without hurting the movie's story. You know, they actually cut 20 minutes out of this film for its initial theatrical release, and it and actually hurts the film. It should be the yeah. length that it is. It, I do think it runs a little bit long. Speaking of running a little bit long, Mike06 was really late tonight, but he's here because we love him. What's up, Mike? How you doing? Hey, what's up? I'm having uh, issues with my Bluetooth, so I, I'm headset free, so hopefully there's no feedback. All right. Well, not so far so good. It's all good. All right. Brooks uh, picked this movie, liked it more this time than the last time that he watched it. What about you, Jelani? What do you think about this film? I love it. Um, I, I think I watched this probably two or three years ago. 
like the last time I remember watching because like it was just I think it was on HBO just randomly and I was like all right I'll sit down and watch it I mean the length of it doesn't bother me because there's a story involved and like you gotta get I mean if you're gonna watch a movie like this this is like Once Upon a Time in America Once Upon a Time in America is like freaking four hours long <laughs> or close to it it's long as crap but it these movies especially with uh Leone like his artwork the way he wants to tell this story is gorgeous like it it, it looks fantastic the music does it, it just not it, it's a character in this movie it's gorgeous uh it, the characters are memorable i mean you you i understand the motivations of what frank wants to have i understand what harmonica uh, or the man or whoever he is uh, charles bronson wants um I even know what Lady McBain wants in some form or fashion. It, 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 and of course, Cheyenne. It, the characters are so rich. And the story is rich. And you get so much out of it for such a simple tale. It's just these people that... Well, these evil bad guys decide to kill a family so that they can make sure that a railroad station isn't built. I mean, it's, a, it's the most simple story. Man, man, and a man out for revenge. It's it's the West. It's it's gritty. It's it tells its tale in a beautiful way. I mean, I'm Brooks. Like I said, man, you you find some bangers, and this is one of them. This is just one of those films that I I always watch. I can't wait to watch this movie every time I've seen. I've probably seen it probably six times in my life. Probably, nice. This was probably the sixth time, and I enjoy it every time, man. I'm sorry. There's just too much going on in it for it to have such a long uh, so the, the length of it doesn't bother me because you're still telling me that story that's what i enjoy about it and like the long pauses the glances everything that you guys talked about is pretty much in this film and you just you, i mean i don't know what the hell you want to what want me to say but it, it's gorgeous <laughs> i i it's 100 percent, man yeah it's gorgeous it's and 100 you mentioned how much you love this film and and it works and and it works so well another person who works and works so well is mike the voice matthews mike what do you think about this film overall once upon a time in the west it's a great film i love it it's uh it's it kind of it's like jelani said like i remember watching this like a few years ago um i think it was one of those like it was on like hbo or something and it was just like you know last time i watched i'd watch this i fell asleep and a lot of times I've fallen asleep watching this movie, but it's one of those, like, it's a good movie. So it's like, I just remember watching it and it was like, I remember watching it a long time ago, back in our early twenties. And then it's like, man, this is really good. And then I tried to watch it again. And just, like I said, I kept falling asleep. And then finally I watched it again. I was like, man, this is really good. And it actually was on my list of movies. Um, for Cruise Choice, um, once I get past all the A24 films, so okay. Well, we're not there yet, right? There's a lot. There's a lot to it. There's a lot we can talk about, but I just don't know how far down the rabbit hole we want to go. How much time we want to spend on it? Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let, let's get into it. Let's dive in. Uh, this movie is driven by the characters, as Brooks said, as Jelani said, as Mike alluded to. Uh, Brooks, what is your favorite performance slash character in this film? Uh, hands down, Cheyenne. Cheyenne is like one of my favorite characters in all anything. Like, I love Cheyenne. Cheyenne is, uh, like, his entrance is so fucking badass. Like, you just hear this commotion, like, Jill is having a conversation with this dude, and all of a sudden you just hear a commotion, and this, like, dark figure just kind of lumbers backwards into the, into the saloon, and slowly turns his head, and then you hear the little banjo. Down, 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 down. Oh, dude, Cheyenne is like so great. I love. Him. Yep. And uh, it's like you know he's he's a character that has like more to him that this 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 movie doesn't really give you much. There's a lot of subtext that you know that that you don't necessarily get, like the fact that Cheyenne's like a half breed, and that's why he like has to do this outlaw life is because you know society doesn't wouldn't accept him, you know, and or, or that would accept you, or he would have to be like, you know, subservient, you know, and he can't do all that because Shan's not like that, man. He's a, 
he's a he's his own man. And I love his his crew and like the reverence they have for him. Like when they first show up at the at the saloon afterwards, and dude hands him his duster like he's handing the king back his mantle. Like yeah, I, I'd like. I don't think I could ever be Cheyenne, but I could definitely be one of Cheyenne's men. I think <laughs> Cheyenne is like. I'd be like, yes, sir. I will follow you wherever. Because <laughs> you know, Cheyenne's men don't get killed. They don't. Cheyenne's men yeah. do not get killed. Now that's a really that's good true. pick, man. I'm glad you said that because that is one that it is a standout performance in this film because there's a lot of character in this film, but he brings some of the most personality. Yeah. That makes sense. Like speaking every of single person- Cheyenne is better. I think. Absolutely. Every, speaking of personality, Jelani's got a lot of personality. What do you think, man? What's a performance you want to highlight? Another thing about, real quick about Cheyenne, Jason Robards makes that performance absolutely fantastic. He is, he is brilliant. But yeah, my pick is going to be Frank Henry Fonda. Uh, Frank is, Frank's a quintessential, like, black men scare a lot, more, men scare a lot yeah. more when they're dying. He's like the blackest of yeah. hats. It's the blackest of hats. Yeah, he, he puts the Leon, Louis Levi Levi Cleef to shame. Yeah, he does. The blackest he puts Levi Cleef to shame. Eyes, yep. Bright eyes. Bright eyes from good, bad, and ugly. I, I think he's probably uh, worse than he, Angel Eyes. He, he's worse than Angel Eyes. Angel Eyes, that's right. I think Angel Eyes ever killed yeah. a child. He, no, I don't think he did. He that's the first did. thing you see this fucker do in this movie. You he see, kills, just I, imagine, I name. imagine being in a fucking cinema in 1968. And you see Henry fucking Fonda show up and kill a kid. Dude, that's right. like mind blowing. Man, that's like. It is just... mind blowing. <laughs> kill an entire so family now that you said my name. <laughs> He's the devil. <laughs> we love you, right? He is an absolute beast of a man. And like, he, he's the only one that like got the girl, but he had to force her. And it is, is he's so evil and conniving and like. There's not a redeeming factor to him, but he does respect the game. He does like he respects Harmonica. He knows who he is, especially by the end of the film. Like he wants to be this Baron, this robber Baron, or this this mogul to make all the money and do all the things that the crippled guy wanted him to do. I can't remember that guy's name, but he, he wanted to be the Morton. Yeah. He wanted he wanted to be that care or be that person, but he knows in his heart that he can't be because he's this man and he respects the game. He sees harmonica and he's like, you know, harmonica keeps him alive. Man after all, eh, Frank? Enough. That's right. Just, just, just a man. A t- just Ancient a man. Grace. That's right. Dying breed. And he knows it. And it's such, it's such a character. Like uh, you, you know who he is. Like, you know what he's about. We don't have that many characters like that now that just stick out. That just, hey, I'm this, I'm that dude, I'm that asshole. You know, it, we, that's that's who you point to with Frank every time he walks into a scene in this movie. It's like one of his yeah. first one-liners is like, uh, "Dude's like, I told you just to scare him. People scare easier when they're dying. When they're dying, <laughs> and it's true. That's like that kind of sums up Frank's philosophy. <laughs> yep. yep, and he yeah, has to know when he's dying too. Yeah, and Henry, oh. Henry Fonda is amazing in this film, he and is. Frank is one of the most. He's the most one of the most memorable characters by the end of it. Like his his impact is. It can't. This movie doesn't exist without Henry Fonda in that yeah. role. It's such a great just juxtaposition. What about you, Mike? What's the character you want to perform? Uh, highlight. I will go with Mister Harmonica then. Um, Frank was my initial choice. Uh, harmonica being my second. Um, Frank's great. I mean, you, I mean, the whole thing with Frank is that you know, you're looking at Henry Fonda come on the scene, and usually he's a good guy, and like when he's a bad guy, it's kind of like, oh, shit. what kind of movie is this? It's jarring. So, you know, it's just it's kind of nice to see like it's your, it's, it's you know, the good, here's the good guy, but no, he's really the bad guy. So we get Charles Bronson, though, who did a great job as Harmonica. When uh, he should talk, he plays his Harmonica. And when he should play his Harmonica, he talks. But also he can shoot. So I don't know. I think it's very it's very quiet, very just, you know, he doesn't have to say much. His presence is, is there. He really doesn't know. 
everything everything's in his favor. Like Frank completely forgot about him, and he's been focusing on Frank. And so it's just one of those like it's it's this he little cat. Like, like the, Frank's the fact that Frank's forgotten him like against him because Frank like every time Frank looks at him, he's always looking at him like he's trying to remember and he can't. It's just like he knows it's frustrating to him. Well, it's like on the scene, like he's 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 like he knows, like he got caught, like he knew he wasn't, like when he, he's on the train, when he follows the guy back, and Frank's like, you know, it's like I wouldn't do anything, Frank. I wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Like I wouldn't let anybody follow me. And then he's up on the train, and Frank sees it, and then he gets himself caught mm-hmm. on purpose. And it's that's a good right. death for that guy too. The guy with the suspenders. Yeah, like you can't pretty, trust a man that wears suspenders and a belt. The man that doesn't trust, trust his own pants. pants. His own pants. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 great because it's like you see him, and he's just like, you know, what's your name? And he 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 says one name, and he's like, well, he's dead. And it's like, you know, it's like Jenkins was it like Perkins or Jenkins or something like that. And then yeah, then he says freaking name. Frank's just like what? And so it's just as good like. It's like Frank doesn't know who this is, but he knows he's somebody. And like even when they have like a like a spirit of vengeance sort of in this movie. Yeah. I've noticed like you never see him drink really until the last scene. Like, because at the bar he pours himself a drink, then he talks to Cheyenne, and then he just walks away. He never takes the drink. And then like at the end, the only time he takes a shot is uh like right before uh, he puts the dollar in. He's talking to Frank. Yeah, he puts the dollar in the shot glass. And I know that Frank, like Cheyenne and, and Harmonica really don't have that long of a time together, but they kind of figure out what's going on and like they automatically it's like we gotta build a station. And we gotta figure out what's going on. Like so but oh, I have yeah. to say, this entire movie. movie, by the way. It's like sound clip of uh of both uh uh Claudia, what was her last name? Uh uh, Cardinali, Cardinelli. Yeah, Claudia Cardinali and uh, Charles Bronson sang "Station" from this movie. Yeah, we yes. get, we gotta we gotta definitely clip that out. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm gonna go with Claudia Cardinali then as Jill McBain because she is one of the choice. most complex female characters in a western at this point in 1968. Not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying that it's more complex than your typical. Madonna or the whore. Do you know what I'm saying? You kind of have that thing, especially with Sergio's work. But in this one, and she she actually pulls this off, brings that complexity out, and she's fucking smoking hot. Speak, speaking of smoking it. hot. Brooks, what do you think about the style and structure of this movie? Well, like I said, I love it. Like it's, This is like, it's so Western. It's even more Western than like a regular Western like I, he gets like I love how he gets like it's like, so it's like that meme for for a uh, pimp my ride with exhibit and he's like yo we heard you like westerns so what if we put a western in your western <laughs> to make western, 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 western with some western sauce but yeah like uh I love the cl- like the close ups in this movie and like the just the slow moments like that whole the whole scene at the beginning the opening scene with those three gunfighters like I'd, I'd love that scene, like like the the way it builds the tension, like and the train finally gets there, and then you get the fake out where they're like, ah, he's gone, and then you hear the, and then there's Charles Bronson. It's like, oh man, this is this is like how a western should be, you know? It makes you yeah, feel good, good, like you're yeah. in the you're in the western. Dude, it's so perfectly crafted together. The camera movement, the fucking sound design, like that opening scene. They tried to score that. They had a score. They just couldn't get it to work. They did the sound design score thing. Yeah, that, that creaky, that creaky ass fucking windmill or whatever oh. is what makes it. Man. And it's brilliant. It's brilliant in the the suspense and the tension that it builds. And one of uh, allegedly one of Sergio Leone's uh, ideas was to bring in Lee Van Cleef and Clint Eastwood and the other dude to be those three dudes. So you think that they're going to be the main character yeah. and then they get killed because it just shows how badass harmonica is. You know what I'm saying? What about you, Jelani? What do you think about the style and structure of this film? Oh yeah. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, the, the, the pacing yeah, it can be a little tedious in places, but it doesn't matter. Like it, it, it's telling the story. Like you were talking about that scene, that scene is brilliant. 
everything about it, even that fly thing, which still bothers me. I'm like, how did they get a fly train? And, they put marmalade on his beard. Oh, okay. That's what they said in the commentary. So that he and they went out a jar of flies and they had marmalade. They smeared marmalade on his face and then they let one fly out. Yeah, I guess like, good deal. Well, that's a lot of takes then. <laughs> it had to been a lot of work, but it's it is shot beautifully. I mean, everything about it, um, and, and the the music matching, like we were talking about the visuals with it. And I know we're getting into music, but it's they work so well together to tell this brilliant story. And like it, like I said, it's in simple terms, every scene is shot like purposefully everything like leone like took time i'm sure plenty of time to even get like the train scene where like right after cheyenne's men come and kill all those guys and like you follow the horse and the horse like the horse is walking and it walks to the other horse but you as you're walking you see the train aftermath after everyone's like dead like on the ground is shot so brilliantly. I'm like, oh my gosh, ugh, I ate that junk up. And like Morton crawling on the ground, and like his when he finally dies, like falls out and dies. Uh, that that's such a good scene. And on top of that, like you don't like you know it's Cheyenne's men that did it, unless it was uh, unless Morton paid those guys. Did Morton pay those guys? To shoot no. up all the other people, or was that was Cheyenne's? They were men. killed by Cheyenne's men, because that's when Cheyenne got shot. He got that's shot when by he got Morton. Shot. He got shot by Morton. Hmm. So I was just like, that, that's just a great scene. I just love the horse walking to the other horse, and as he's walking, you just see all of the dead bodies, and it's such a great continuous shot. It, it, there's so many just purposeful shots in this movie that just blow my mind man it's it's such a great great great, great pace i like the pace of it i'm okay with the pace of this film so like style and structure it's a western it's a beautiful western one of the best westerns ever told that's all i can say about it all right what about you mike what do you think about the style and the structure man there's a lot to say about the style and structure on this um i mean it all goes back from like the story to the cinematographer um and the shots, the shot selection that he picked. Um, it's like I kind of told you earlier, like he was going through, it's kind of like the, 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 the fistful of dollars and all that was a nice uh, prequel to making this because a lot of the, there's a lot of similar shots in there, but then there's, but it's also what his style is um, that he likes and what he goes with. Um, I was trying to look it up. It's the uh, Tonio Delicola is the dude's name. That was the cinematographer. Um, he was also the cinematographer in Once Upon a Time in America um, and a whole bunch of other things. But he was like their work, their work and everything was, you know, it's it really made the film. It's kind of like I was telling you earlier about like there's like in spaghetti westerns and like in, in westerns with bad stories like they, the bat drop the scenery and everything behind you it's kind of like yeah well let's move the story forward by you know like let's show in this lands huge landscape and then like just just pan in and go in and go out and zo like zoom in and zoom outs and then uh fade ins fade outs and it's just kind of like he doesn't do that it's like you do get to see a little bit of monument valley and like in this but it's kind of like he it's uh the opening scene or not the opening scene but the like the two ones and he kind of just guides your eyes to it the guy that climbs the tower and then it pans over and then when she's and when she's looking at the uh when she sees the city being built and everything like the way that it just pan, like it's not it, it's i mean there's a lot to it i mean when you break down a good bit of it I mean, outside of the, like, you take that and the acting and combine it together, it's some of the, probably the best, one of the best, like, I don't know. I can't really think of what I'm going to try to say. Um, other than that, it's really good. So, there's, okay. just, there's, a lot, there's a lot to it. And um, it almost leaves you, it leaves you speechless. You know what I'm saying? Very much so. 
Yeah, very much so. I, I think that the style is obviously there. It is meticulously crafted. It does lean a little bit too long. Sometimes it relies too much on the artistic and not so much on the telling the story, right? Like that that's the only kind of nitpick I would have on the structure. I have no nitpick on the style. I think the style is absolutely 129, my bad, 169% fantastic. What about you, Brooks? Uh, let's move on to the music. I personally think it's Ennio Marconi's best score. I, I absolutely love it. Very simple. Four themes. You talk about Cheyenne. Dun, 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 dun. You got the harmonica bit. You got Frank's bit. You got Jill's bit. And they all just work together. It's four simple pieces of music that work together. It's so classic. It's so operatic. And that's what this is. It's a Western opera. The music really leans towards that. In fact, in this long ass movie, there's very there's very little dialogue, if you really think about it, compared to the length of the film. The music carries it. What do you think about the music, Brooks? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think this is probably his best his best score. And it is just it is basically just four character themes. And um they're kind of like merged together in different parts, it's particularly Frank and harmonicas. Cheyenne's theme usually tends to stand on its own, which kind of makes sense because, you know, Cheyenne's kind of... Uh, Cheyenne's theme reminds me of Bulk and Skull's theme from Power Rangers. When Cheyenne's like, when Cheyenne's under the train, you hear the Bulk and Skull theme instead. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, and of course, you know, Jill has the theme, her theme of the down, 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 down. Yeah. But uh, it's usually like, like through most of the movie, like Frank's theme and, and Harmonica's theme just slowly get more and more tangled together until the end. And it's kind of like, uh, it's like, you know, it's telling the story through the music as well as, you know, with the visuals, which is, I think, I think that's a good thing, maybe. Yeah. Seems like it'd be a good idea to do for a movie. It is a good idea. What about you, Jelani? What do you think about the music in this film? Yes, you guys are right. The, the themes are important for this film. I'm like, ding, ding. Yeah, when you combine the two. Oh God, it's it's amazing. Yeah, Cheyenne, you know what, Brooks, you, you sold me on the Cheyenne, man. Dun, 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 dun. And it's played it's in so different cool. like ways too. Like when he first comes in, it's like menacing. Yeah. Brown, 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 brown. Because you don't know like Cheyenne. Right. Yet. They're yeah. Like trying to be like, is he a bad guy? And then it's like the rest is played for for laughs because <laughs> the guy is a comical fellow, and like uh, he's. He feels like he's out of place in this movie, like in certain ways. I mean, he's perfect for the film. It just feels like this this guy shouldn't be like in charge of the gang. I don't know. He's just too cumbersome and whatnot. But the music and, and the music kind of guides him that way too throughout the movie. But at the same time, you still know he's a badass. Like it tells that story. And Frank's is like, down, down. And it's like, and it, and his is more menacing and it 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 tells that he's the bad guy um it's very clear and you're right jill's music is dun, 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 dun. like it, it's just her Get that, her that opera opera sound is, oh yeah, oh. yeah it moves into that and it, it's just and that, uh, that's especially when you see the town like they're trying to build and they play that music. It, it's very operatic, and it goes into that, and it's 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 beautiful. And then, of course, harmonica, which I'm still confused why his harmonica doesn't really sound like a harmonica. It is it, it, it's like, it's like <laughs> Italian, of course. It's magic, but magic harmonica. It's just. I love when he plays just, the bad note on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Like and that. It's just, it, it just doesn't feel right to me that like because it, it, it doesn't look like he's playing it. It just like he's holding it. I know it's like in the background or whatnot, <clears throat> but that always is jarring to me because something about that, that uh, just him just, playing it doesn't feel right to me. Yeah. But other than that, this music is great. I mean, there's nothing to complain about. Hell yeah. To be honest, 
What about you, Mike? Yeah. What do you think about the music in the film? Uh, I think the music is music, music is great. Um, the music for all the characters is wonderful. Uh, I always thought uh, Cheyenne's was more mischievous, like very playful, um, because it's kind of it's kind of what his character is. Um, Harmonica was always just kind of more of the dark and mysterious, like ooh, what's this? And it's just it always it seems like it's in the distance. And a lot of the times when you first see him, he's always in the distance. Um, Frank's I thought was very, um, it was similar, uh, but it's just a little bit darker and a little bit more fearful. It's kind of, uh, reminds me of like the, uh, Peter, the wolf from Peter and the wolf. It just, it's, it's more of the, I guess the menacing, uh, I guess you would say. And then, uh, Jill's was just very romantic and up and. Kind of romantically sounding so it's one of those like i think everything worked um the sound effect was great uh, if you go back and, and watch it um there's so there's the door the, the the creaking of the door in the very beginning and then the there's sounds that play every time somebody's about to die or something's about to happen they're there they're, he uses sounds so like he was kind of repetitive was it's like the water dripping, water dripping is one because it's like it drips on the guy's head and it's kind of like it's it's funny, kind of funny and kind of thing. But it's that sound of the drip, drip, drip. And then like the shootout happens. Um, the father, the father McBain is going to get water out of the well, well when the daughter dies. And then there's the shootout later um, where Jill's in the bath and the guy is trying to shoot Frank. And he, uh, harmonica shoots him. So it's like there's all these little things in there that have sounds that are that are always. It's like you can hear like this little. It's like you just things like you hear this little creak, little just little little small repetitive creak creaking sound. And then it's just like, hey, somebody's about to die. Then there it is. There's the gun. And then there's the action. So I thought like it's not really like it's a little tell, but like I thought it was really cool what he did with the sound on that and then just using like i said everybody having their own music and then and kind of combining those to make the soundtrack because if you go back and listen to or go back and watch like uh when morton dies and he's out there drinking the water and, and everything else it, you don't you hear a little bit of um chills and uh frank's theme it's just kind of very similar like a combined like it's in other words it's just like the bad guy is showing a little bit of compassion i guess so I guess that's why you get like the the, the I guess the tones of both of those, and that one little. To the other stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's just stuff, much stuff like that. I mean, it's it's really good. There's a lot to it, so it's just crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. This movie is also packed with a lot of thematic material. Brooks, what is this movie speaking to you? What is the theme? Well, I, th I think this movie, this movie is kind of about the the inevitability of justice. You know, like uh, Frank. Frank was always destined to end this way because he sowed he sowed, he basically sowed the seeds of his own destruction with his his just blatant cruelty and you know and not giving a shit and you know that that caused he basically created harmonica for this one grudge a man who was so dedicated to killing Frank that he would go through all of these ridiculous extremes just to get the chance just to get the chance to be able to to kill Frank like a man like harmonica goes throughout the entire movie like he gets shot he doesn't give a fuck like he just like all he doing is, is slowly moving his way towards Frank and closer to that goal and like that's all he cares about because you know he's he's Frank's judgment really when it comes down to it you know Frank's it's time it was time for Frank's uh to face justice and uh Harmonica was basically the eight eight. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, uh, Jelani? What is the theme of this movie to you? What's it speaking to you? This movie, like, it calls on the Rolling Stone song. You can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want, but if you try, sometimes you get what you need. And most of the, and pretty much every character has that same kind of motivation. Uh, harmonica. 
wants his his moment to kill Frank, and it takes and it, like I said, it goes a roundabout way to get it. Uh, but he tries, and he saves Frank's life in order so he can get his opportunity because he I know he wanted to kill him, but he knew there wasn't a right time to do it with all his men around. So it took let them him kill him. It's not the same thing. That's right, not the same thing. And then you get to like Jill, who wants a family. She wants everything in life, you know, because she's been a sex worker in New Orleans all this time. And she finally found a man that's willing to take care of her and her family, uh, you know, and take care of his family and, and make it grow. And he, she finally gets to where she wants to be and come to find out her family is dead because Frank killed them. And it's, you know, she tried some time and it finally got what she finally needed, which was a station, a <laughs> station. Uh, for, yeah, yeah, she got a she got a, a railroad station set up, and will probably be a millionaire, or hopefully we'll see. Um, and then you go to like Frank, who wants to be this mogul, to be this businessman, to make all these m money things, and like I said before, it ends up he's you know he he, he doesn't he gets what he needs, which is a bullet. <laughs> And it, it, because of all the seeds that he's sown of just despair and nonsense, and he got what he deserved, uh, you know, and that's what he needed. And then finally Cheyenne, which, oh, Lord have mercy, Cheyenne. I don't know what he needed other than a pat on the butt. He, he needed to pat Jill on the butt. I, I just, feel like Cheyenne wanted, like, he, his last moments, he spent, like, he, 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 he kind of thought, like, when he met Jill, like, you know, what if I did like settle down, you know? What if mm -hmm. I did just like, you know, do that? Like be that like, thing. He wanted to just kind of have that feeling like before he died, like, you know, to convince himself maybe that, you know, it wouldn't have worked. Right. But he was dying and he did a great job of dying. It took him a long time to die. So, yeah, you can't always get what you want. But if you but try sometimes, you get what you need. Yeah, that's that's what right. From it. All right. What about you, Mike? What do you what do you get from this movie? What's it speaking to you? Uh, greed leads to murder, and then uh, a lot of revenge. Uh, Jelani kind of hit some things like Frank being Frank wants to be a businessman in a way, but he's not, um, because he doesn't have he lacks some of the stuff that Morton's has. But like Morton also wants to be the killer, but really doesn't mm -hmm. have it in him, uh, to be that dirty to get his hands that dirty, and then he's also, you know. Uh, incapacitated in some ways um, with his crutches. And I can't it's remember. Where it was. Ah. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, it's just everybody, like, it's about, it's essentially like the more I can take, the more, I, the more, the more I can just take from the little man. And then the little man just wants revenge. Uh, you know, that's all he wants. He doesn't, you know, just gonna, gonna move forward. So there's, uh, I'm sure there's something about, you know, the, the a combination of weaving of life and death and uh, something of, because I mean, there's a lot of death in this movie. Yeah. Um, so it's just one of those, like, it just, I guess the. Well, I uh, have something inside of them. Something to do with death. Well, I guess, I mean, it's the, the it's, it's kind of like the growth of the growth the, as civilization grow. Like people have to die for civilization to civilizations have to grow. And those people are good. Those people are bad. So, and it just sucks that, you know, you know, good people are taken um, by evil means for greed. Yeah. So, <laughs> like the 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 dude, you know, Morton and Frank just wanted to get rich, and McDale or McBeal. Morton just wanted to see the Pacific. McBain, McBain yeah. just wanted to, McBain wanted to get rich. Like everybody was just, it's all about get rich or die trying. Yep. Let them die. Paging 50 cent, paging 50 cent. All right. Um, For me, this is about the progression of society and how it's changed. So Frank and Harmonica are two ancient ways of thinking that are kind of left behind with the progression of society. Morton's whole desire to get to the Atlantic Ocean is, I think, symbolic of the expansion of America, right? And what I mean by that is not just expansion through land but knowing that when we basically established the united states 
from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, we are now getting way of a certain way of life, a more violent way of life, right? A, a not a good way of life, but we're only replacing that violence for a different type of violence, which Mike was saying with like greed and stuff like that, right? So it's about this ideal being left behind. However, progression doesn't stop violence. Progression doesn't stop hate. Do you know what I'm saying? That persists. It just evolves into something different, something more heinous and less honest. Because Frank is more honest than Morton. And Harmonica is more honest than Jill. That's why Frank can't be a businessman. He's too honest. He's too blunt. Exactly. And yeah, we may seem like through the progression of society that we, we have less hate, less ill will, less violence, but that's not the truth. It just morphs into something different. We leave something behind. And usually what we leave behind is a little bit more honesty about who we are, if that makes sense. I don't know. Time to rate the film out of five, you digs. Brooks, you picked it. What do you give it? I'll, I'll give it a five. I really, like, I watched, like, I love this movie so much. Like, I'd forgotten how much I loved this movie. And, like, this rewatch really, like, drove it home for me how much I enjoy watching this, this film. And uh, it's a triumph. A masterpiece. Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. Absolutely. I love that. All right. What about you, Jelani? Out of five, you digs, what do you give Once Upon a Time in the West? That's five. I mean, easy. Easy five. Like, Brooks and I watched the first, like, what, 35, 40 minutes yeah. oh, of this movie? Like yeah. I, wa I ended up watching it twice. So I watched it, I finished it that night, and then I watched it again. And it, it was uh, like another or a day or so later. It, it's amazing. It's, it's strictly baller. It's one of those just classics that if you haven't watched Westerns, I would say this, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, um, gosh, Unforgiven. Uh, there's so many. What, what's the, the Kevin Costner one where he's White Earp? White Earp? Not White Earp. Uh, something would. Dang it. Dances with Wolves? No, not that. <laughs> no, the one, well, not White Earp. I take that back. Tombstone. Take that back. That's Tombstone. Kurt Russell, brother. Yeah, that's, that's Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. <laughs> I get them. I get them mixed up. I get them mixed the up. The Kevin sometimes. Costner movie where he plays White Earp. With is White Earp. White Earp. Yeah, it's okay. called White Earp. You are okay. correct. Yeah, I have to remember which one, but not that one. <laughs> it's just, it's you called down one. the thunder. Well, now you've got it. Got it. Yeah, not that one. But a excellent film all around. Um, I've watched it more than once. I suggest you watch it as well if you have a chance. All right. What about you, Mike? Out of five, you digs. What do you give Once Upon a Time in the West? Uh, I give this one a five. Um, it's really good. I mean, it's slow. Uh, and I could knock off, you know, two stars for that, but I'm not, or two you digs, but I'm not. So I'm going to leave it at five. So. All right. All right. So I think the movie is really great. I think it's very profound. I think it's meticulously crafted, great music, and Ennio Marconi's best score, one of Sergio Leone's best films. I fucking love it. And it started the cinematic career of one of my favorite directors, Dario Argento. It is a bit slow, though. It takes too long. It sacrifices story for art sometimes. That being said... I don't give a shit. Five you digs. Five you digs. This is a really good film, and it may be one of the best at Westerns out there. It is a truly art house Western film that deserves the attention in its full form. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, not the cut down version that we got initially or anything like that. Watch the restored version. Don't watch the theatrical. There is so much thought behind this movie that any of its faults fall by the wayside 100%. So five you digs for me, Brooks, Jelani, and Mike. So that's a that's just five you digs. That means perfect movie, Brooks. Good choice again. And to recap Brooks' cruise choice uh, picks, Enter the Dragon, Dead Man, and now Once Upon a Time in the West, bro. 
You're batting a thousand. You know what I'm saying? All right. You got good taste. Coming up next week is... I'm going to have to pick a really bad one for the next one. (laughs) Coming up next week is another long movie, but a good one. How about Akira Kurosawa's Throne of Blood? Mm. Basically, his Macbeth. Very excited for that. But also check out Dylan's Horror Show on Saturday night as they talk about demons. The Lamberto Bob. Yeah, so it's like Italian week almost in a way, right? Sergio Leone, uh, Lamberto Bava, and then we're switching to Japan for a Kurosawa Throne of Blood next week. All right, Brooks, thank you for being here, man. Final thoughts? Uh, I, I would like just watch this movie. It's really good. And uh, me and Jelani do this thing. It's called Go Figure Reviews, and we do stuff. And you should check it out. And we did we did we did a, a a house tour recently, which was pretty interesting. This fellow built a spaceship uh, cockpit basically in his house, and it's really it's really dope. You see it? Yeah, y'all should watch that video. And are y'all still one away from two hundred, or have you gotten there, Jelani? We got Final two hundred and one. Yeah, all I gotta do is make one post. Thanks so much, guys, for like watching our videos. It's fantastic that we now have a two hundred one subscribers. Um. I don't know what we'll do for that. I don't think we'll do anything for that, but I, I'll attempt something. I'm, I'm thinking about giving away a Batmobile um, if we get to like 500, because we need to get like to 500. And I want to see if we'll see how that goes. So thank you so much, guys, for that. Um, yeah, please watch our house tour video. Basil is fantastic. Uh, the fact he allowed us in his home and showed us his secret spaceship is one of the coolest things I've ever uh scene and like uh, you should just watch it it's just absolutely amazing i really liked it um west upon time the west is an absolute banger as well uh please guys get out there and watch this and of course get out there and go figure absolutely mike thank you for being here final thoughts always a pleasure um brooks thanks you for, for picking a great movie oh uh, the uh go check out Go figure reviews with Jelani and Brooks. It's pretty fun. That 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 I did watch it. That uh, rocket ship was pretty dope. Like I would have never thought to put that in my house. Uh, and then again, it's just kind of like, you know, I know we know people that have probably got a bat cave in their house somewhere. So true, true. Uh, oh, and Perry's mentioned in the tank. There was a tank in the video as well. It was an awesome tank. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, it was a really cool video. So. I'm proud of you guys for doing what you're doing, Robbie. I'm proud of you for doing the PCP. So, uh, me just doing the shop and nothing else really exciting. Uh, all the you take pictures, on, man. All the, Photographs. All the, all the adventures ah. with pictures on Instagram at Mike06. So, it's like how it is here. It's all spelled out. So, it's about it. Nice. You got to figure out. Got to figure out why my Bluetooth on my computer just died. And well, good luck with that, Mike. Yeah, so that's that's my next biggest project that I have to work on. All right, well, Mike's about to get cracking on that. We're about to get cracking on the rest of the week. Anyway, join Dylan's Horror Show Saturday night for Demons. Join us next week for PCP Movie Night. Brian's pick, Throne of Blood. Very excited to dive into that one. Anyway, we appreciate it. Go check out Go Figure Reviews. Once Upon a Time in the West. Great film, y'all. Go check it out. PCP says. That's what we say.